Hello guys, um, welcome back to my channel. Uh, sorry it has been so long. Um, it's been absolutely ages since I've made a video. Um, I apologise. Um, yeah, I, I find myself with very little time. And also, with nothing much to show you. Strictly modelling anyway. Uh, yeah, so what have I been up to? Uh, the last thing you saw of me, I think, was the part one of the Out of Your Comfort Zone group build. Unfortunately, that is still exactly where it was last time you saw it. Um, because I have been doing my first proper paid commission work. Um, something completely different. Not strictly modelling, not scale modelling. It's... Uh, for a couple of mates of mine, they're starting up a uh, bolt action uh, league type thing at work, and they obviously they got some armies and whatnot. Now you might remember the Bren carrier and the tank that I've done for a couple of them. Well, they want the rest. They wanted the rest of their army done, which involved lots and lots of troops. So I'll show you that now. More specifically, I've just finished this box of American infantry and I've got the command squad as well which are all metal minis and some field pieces as well which I'll show you they're not finished yet but I'll show you what I'm up to with those so yeah that's what I've been doing I've also got um, so that's one commission and then part of the other commission I have the British infantry which I've not started yet along with a British Machine gun team. The uh, the casting quality of these metal pieces is shocking, and then also the commander. The sculpting of the metal miniatures is beautiful. Like they have so much more character and pose, and they just pop. But the actual casting is flashy, especially with stuff like this. Is flashy and horrible and very soft. But the actual figures, the actual metal figures, are so much better than the plastic figures. The plastic figures are perfectly moulded, crisp, easy to assemble, but they don't have the same character. Anyway, so yes, I've been doing that. It's been a good chance to um, use my new Series 7s that I've got. Not sure if I showed you these. Yeah, these are the Series 7, but the um, the miniatures version of the Series 7, see so if you can see that in there. The miniatures ones. There you go, let me get one out to show you. Got to, so I got these for Christmas, and they are beautiful. So yes. Yeah, so I've got four sizes of those, and they're fantastic. Been really using those a lot, they've been really good. And uh, yeah, but I've also been using my airbrush to lay down all the base tones, and I have been amazed. Because I only have the um, Iwata Neo uh, entry level airbrush. I've had it for two years now. Normally use it for my scale models and that whatnot, uh, and I love it. But it is a bottom end airbrush. A lot of people have problems, or a lot, I read a lot of things saying, oh, it's good, but it's not. Good enough for fine detail work. Well, I think I might be able to. Uh, I might. I might disagree with that. So anyway, without further ado, let me show you what I've been up to. I'll just show you a couple up close because obviously there's loads of them. You're not going to see all of them. But if I uh, if I spin the camera around and I'll show you, I'll show you what I've been up to. All right. See you in a second, guys. Okay, guys. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, so here is just one of the um, infantry guys that I've got done. If I um, I'm trying to get the light, it was an absolute nightmare. So if I just now, like I say, I don't do figures. Um, I've done one figure up to this point, and these are these are in one fifty sixth scale. But yeah, um, I'm actually really quite impressed with how this guy's come out. If I, Try and get you a bit closer on detail. 
Yeah, and then I've I've been reading a lot about the Italian campaign, so I thought I'd base them. So I thought I'd do sort of a, an Italian sort of Monte Cassino type base, like Rocky and that. But it's actually come out looking quite Normandy sort of beachhead ish. But yeah, so that's one of them. And I've got another just stock trooper. That's it. Ooh. <laughs> Don't knock them off, these aren't mine. So, yes, yeah, so the actual quality of these plastic miniatures. Is very good. Yeah, I've tried to work on the flesh tones with these quite not sure how well it's come out, but I think I hope you'll I hope the customer will be happy with them. So they're the plastic ones. And uh so then this is these are the metal ones and you should be able to I think you'll be able to see the difference I'd have thought just in the sort of I get to focus. So there's the um, the first lieutenant, the leader of this force. The bases aren't quite finished on these guys. But yeah, these metal miniatures have a lot more expression. Oh, focus. And there's his two pips there, I'm not sure if that is second lieutenant, but he's the commander. Um, Show you just a couple more. Not going to show you all of them, but this was a. This was I like this. This this casting is lovely. This is the medic, and I just thought his expression and the character in this mini is just fantastic. Absolute panic on his face. But yeah, really come out quite nicely. So I'm hoping that the. Uh, Hoping the client will be happy with these. Yeah, very nice. But yes, just going back to it. If we put this guy up. So. The... Let me get something to point with. The helmet. Actually, that's no good. I can't see what I'm doing. The helmet was airbrushed. This, the top, the light green, was airbrushed, and then the base coat for the trousers, the brown, was airbrushed. Obviously you can see there was no room between the trousers and the tunic for any overlap, so like any overspray or anything like that. And I managed to get down there with my Iwata Neo. And I didn't have to go back in to um, touch it up at all. Just with nice thin paint and patience, you can achieve. Well, I was, I mean, and it was using Vallejo Game Color paints as well, which were a pig to airbrush. If I do so, let's try and get them to focus. Okay, now it doesn't want to focus. Yeah. So, this brown and this green. The trousers and the top were airbrushed with no masking or anything. I was able to get in there without any overspray from this onto this. So yeah, really impressed with the eye water near. Now before I go on to something a tad cooler, I'll just go show you all the finished pieces. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's the rest of his army. There's obviously a bazooka team. Um, a sniper team crouching down at the back. And then the rest are just... Vanilla blokes, couple of sergeants thrown in. Also, just a quick one. If no one's seen it, that's the F-16 that I finished off a couple of months ago. So I haven't actually done a video on that. Yeah. So uh, the last thing I have to do for this army is the heavy weapons options, and this is where I'm up to. This is a medium anti-tank gun. And it was the wheels aren't attached because I'm going to paint the wheels separately. That's why they look a bit wonky. But I, um, I've got a base on its way to me that I've ordered. But yes, this the gun is the gun's all assembled. Like I say, apart from the wheels, 
the gun was okay to build. Um, the casting, the, the casting quality wasn't great. Lots of clean up and whatnot, and it's still a bit soft. It's, we get spoilt with plastic kits <laughs> like your dragons and your Hasegawa's and things. Going to these sort of metal casts is a shock. But yeah, but the sandbags were my first attempt using oh, Millipot. And I have to say, obviously it's not been painted yet or anything, but I have to say, I'm actually, this was following um, a guide I found on International Scale Modeler. Can't remember who posted it, I'm sorry, I would have given you a shout out. But instead of using um, Hessian net, or some sort of Hessian material to sort of create the dimples, I just used a cut down <laughs> toothbrush head. But yeah, I think that's come out nicely, and it's obviously dried rock solid, so that's one piece, so that's... And then there's the... And then he's also got a light mortar team as well. I had a few spare spam bags. I might not include them. But yeah, so that's all I've got left. So once the troops and the command squad was one commission. These two are a separate commission, but for the same bloke. And then I've got the English to do. And then I can finally, touch wood, get back to doing some airplanes. All right, let me spin you around, guys. Let me spin you around. All right, just stop him with me, guys. I know that's a bit of a bit of a ramble but I've done a lot as you can see these figures even doing them in batches take a long time to paint I think I worked it out somewhere each one's taken me about three hours individually if you if you add it up I mean I've been doing them in batches of six but even so apart from the command squads all they got all, they all got done individually uh, but yeah I'm sick of figures <laughs> no uh, it's going all right I, I can't wait to get back to I've got some 135th figures and a little um, Tamiya field kitchen field maintenance thing so I'm going to do a diorama for that so this has been brilliant practice for that sort of flesh tones washes just basic figure painting because like I said I'm not an expert in figure painting I'm not an expert in anything but definitely not that uh, yeah using milliput sort of doing groundwork etc etc I'll be doing a completely different style of basing for the English. That'll be more of a traditional sort of muddy, grassy, sort of Normandy feel type feel to it. But yeah, so that's what I'm doing. That's what I'll be doing for the considerable future. I want to model something proper so bad. I've got I've got a Corsair sat through there. I've got well, I've got loads, but I really want to get back to doing some aircraft or some armor, some proper modeling. But this is money, so comes first. I don't think I'll do any more commissions after this, tell you the truth. Uh, I quite enjoy it. I think I'm enjoying it more because I've not done it before. I think if I was to do it again, where well, I wasn't learning so much, it would it'd kill me, to be fair. But yeah, I can see why commissions are a double-edged sword. But anyway, enough dwelling on that. I have got something else to show you, and this is cool. I got, I treated myself to the new FAQ book from AK, the aircraft one. And this is, oh, it's beautiful. This is why I just can't, I, I, I can't wait to get back into aircraft modeling. There's so much good stuff in this book. Some of the translation, in a couple of places, literally probably about five pages, the translation's a bit dodgy, but it gives you complete, oh, where are we? Gives you complete step-by-steps and what I like as well, all of these complete, there's loads of aircraft that it does this for, there's like a whole section. But each of those techniques that you see in that bit are covered earlier on. So yeah, this book, I paid uh, £40 for this book um, off a of Facebook seller group, Vetrinia, Vetrinia. Veturnius, Vetrunius model kits. Nikki, the woman is who I dealt with. Fantastic. Good service, excellent service, excellently wrapped, and 40 quid. I'll be getting the tank one, the FAQ armor one soon as well. But obviously aircraft's my first love, and there is just so much eye candy in this book. It has to do camo modeling, etc. Chipping, and then cockpits, propellers metals and walking you through loads of different lots of different aircraft all the way through 
Yeah, absolutely stunning book. If you want to know anything about aircraft modelling, so I want to, I've got a course there now, I want to try out loads of techniques on it. And then I think I've got like three more 172 fighters, which is what I've been doing mainly. Once I finish those off of my stash, I feel like I'm getting nearly ready to start moving on to 148 and really stepping up my game. So yeah, that's me guys. Again, sorry that there's been nothing else from my channel. Thank you for all my subscribers for sticking with me and for all the guys that watch. Um, need to do some shout outs. Uh, Karen, glad to see you back on... Well, not, keep doing what you're doing, Karen. It's fantastic. You really inspire me uh, with the YouTube and modelling. Um, Paul Bretland from ISM. Great lad. Uh, I'll be using your advice because <laughs> I need some new spoon cutters. Talking of which as well, uh, Gil from Red Dragon Model Works. Your video, yours and Paul's video on the sprue cutters. I know Paul's was a review of a certain product and yours was a review of sprue cutters on the whole. Perfect video that, Gil. Really informative. So these are my hobby craft, come in a set, crappy ones <laughs> that I've been using for the last two and a half years. Yeah, they work, but hey, when I've got this commission money coming in, I think I'm going to have to get a pair of those Tamiyas. Beautiful. But anyway, so that's it, yeah. Everyone keep doing what they're doing. Again, I apologise that my um, Out of Your Comfort Zone group build has just stalled. Really sorry, Hamilcar and Aaron Newlands. Sorry, mate. I, I've got sidetracked. I didn't think. I didn't think. So, I apologise. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll try and catch you soon. Try and have something to update you with. But again, bolt action. Probably not that interested. I know I'm not. Alright then guys, take it easy, see you soon.